some of the other schools that I work with do more than represent for your school. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. to be honest, we only allowed 20 people to sign up, mm -hmm. and there was an yeah. interest that was much greater than 20. Up. So the, unfortunately, the 20 that signed up just didn't all show. So I think had we had let everybody come, we would have actually had a full house. Like 20 each time. Yeah, we might have had 20 each time. Yeah. yeah. There's like, I know three people in there who have had like, He's going to have it again in yeah. the fall. Yeah. Well, it depends. Ed's yeah. not around to do it. So who <laughs> takes it over? And, then, and as I, and as I, I share, um, it is definitely something you can go into the website, to get the materials, and organize them. We yeah. have such detailed directions on even how to set up a flyer. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, questions to ask to open up, you know, you know, a session, uh, especially for those people who aren't used to being together. So if you uh, decide to take that on, we. Have mm -hmm. every bit of that available to you. Just uh, go to the website. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Oh, yeah. Thank, awesome. Thank you. And what I'm going to start off with is, um, you know, I sent out an email with some of the resources that I've been saying I was going to send out emails with the links on them. Um, and I'm going to go back and send out um, all the other links that I've used too, so that you can, as I said, so, you know, there's so much in there that it's sometimes hard to decide which group to go to to get what you want to get. So, you know, that, those would just be like a first step. Um, so, I know that you uh, specifically asked about, um, you know, a research paper that, you know, that we've done, that we talked about that on tweens and teens, oh, yeah, use of media. Uh -huh. So I, that's on the link in the email, and this is what you will see when you get there. Hi. Yeah, I'm just looking for your email. 8, 8.30 is on the page. And it's going to give you... Um, Marina, you're not on it. I'll forward it to And it's a pretty, in, you know, a deep yeah. study. Oh. Okay. And these are, this is a table of contents that, of the different um, things that you can find once you've taken to that study, including the methodology, um, but specifically looking at teens and tweens. Then the other thing is that um, I've also included how parents of teens and tweens use media. Uh, of kids between the ages of 0 to 8 and then 8 to 18. And then there's also various studies there about things like virtual reality and character education and about the way that parents are using media and technology. So if you want to see any of the research that Common, has, Common Sense has done, there are full reports there and there's also like the cheat sheet of infographics where you can just like get the highlights of the study and just kind of see what's going on. And um, yeah, so these are all publicly available. We're doing another one. We just released this one on virtual reality um, just a couple weeks ago. And then we're doing one on the state of education and how um, educators are using technology that's coming out, I believe, this summer or this fall. Um, there's also ones on gender. There's, I mean, there's all kinds of interesting research in there about the ways that media is influencing kids. And I'm sorry, where was this on the website? It was under research. research. Common sense. Census media, and th that should be on your link too. Um, okay. So this is the common sense census. And then if you go, if you look at the tabs across the top, mm -hmm. the second on the right is the research there, and that's where all of these research papers. And then the common sense census is listed as one of them. Okay. Um, okay. So then we also have. Um, 
also included in your link, um, we talked about Do Howard Gardner last week, and uh, we have more information from him um, and Katie Davis. And this, is, this again is just like to like fill in some of those holes that we haven't been able to talk about in our in our um, our weekly meetings. And so this is a, a book and a discussion on the app generation. Um, and I have links in your email on, on that as well. And it's a you know pretty good YouTube video on it as well. Is there a reason you guys are talking about Howard Gardner? Um, just talking about you know his um, the work that he's doing clay uh, with clay and you know um, how that affects um, the way that we use it to look at media. Did you know that all of our curriculum is based on his work? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I have the Harvard School. Yeah. Harvard School of Education. Yeah. And so the other, um, the other person in this video is um, Kathy Davis, who is one of his students. And looking at apps as, from both, we've talked about this a lot, both perspectives, the, how they can help us, how they help us to organize, but are they also a crutch at the same time? And that's the book. And then an, an article that was in the Seattle Times about it. And this is the um, research study on parents' use of of uh, digital media. Now I had one other thing I wanted to ask before we get started. Um, Nicole, is Nicole here today? Oh, okay, Nicole, I tried to send you a um, an email, but it bounced back, so. Oh, I got your other one. Okay. It probably took okay. my stand up that I didn't. Okay, all right, good. All right, um, now, going on to... Was this a Girl Scout? Or is that regarding that, what I we talked about? Well, yeah. it was, you know, what I was saying, that I send a bunch of links to you all, um, yeah. from all of this stuff that I've showed you today. Oh, I just, uh -huh. yeah, I got, I, I found it in my stand. Okay, all right. And that's what you just did. So let's start off with a video. And this is a, another story, a case story, about Allie. And her, um, and it's gonna give us a perspective on what is sexting. What do, you, what do you think that, what does that mean to you at this point? The word sexting, do you have an idea? Does it bring anything to mind? Sending new photos. But I would also think it would be like, Suggested text yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. Right. Okay. yeah. Okay. But I have a feeling it might mean something different to our middle schoolers than it means to us. What do you think it means to middle schoolers? I don't know, but I said to my daughter today in the car, I said, our topic tonight is sexting. And she's like, oh, mom, nobody does that. No, I think it means I think they do. <laughs> I, I didn't say that, but right. I don't know what she thinks. It is so. I thought maybe they would, would be ask a follow up question to see. Yes, I don't know if she'll answer it though. Yeah, yeah, I kind of think it's like a grown up's term for it. Like, I don't yeah. think kids, yeah. I think kids think that's like super goofy to say, <laughs> right? I like, mean, cyberbullying. Maybe they don't yeah. know it that, it, be. that it has that title necessarily. The sex. Probably his sex. Just sex like alone. Not sex. Sex. I'm not having just sex. Just sex. Just sex. Right. Or, or I'm more. just talking about right. making out somewhere or, yeah. I don't know. And it doesn't last. And it's, you know, it's not that, it's not, I'm only showing it to one person. You know? okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's not, and I'm not even showing that much. Have yeah. you seen an increase of that with like Snapchat, people thinking it's like not temporary? Yeah. Can I ask a question yeah, about that yeah. too? I saw an email from a coworker actually who uh -huh. said that Gmail is changing its features and there's actually going to be email now that disappears. 
Has anyone heard about that? No. Okay, I, I, I think I did to, see something about that too. I oh, have really? to look into it a little further, right. but um, the what I sort of read very quickly was that there's a sort of a new update, a new version coming out, and you'll be able to mark your email as disappearing. Yes. I did see that, and it was today. Yes. Uh -huh. So very to you. Right. <laughs> I saw it never really does. It never yeah. really does. So uh -huh. that, that, yeah, there was a little bit of back and forth. I'm on this one uh, uh -huh. sort of message board, and so there was a little back and forth about it. What was the back and forth? Well, like, there's, there's certainly legal ramifications, <laughs> and, and, and it never goes away, and it can always be accessed. And it was really under the auspice of freedom of of information act mm -hmm. kind of stuff, mm -hmm. but it mm -hmm. called expiring emails. Apparently. Expired. Well, so ah. if you think about your own inbox, how many of you clean your inbox and have? I don't. No, no. You have thousands of emails <laughs> sitting yes. in your inbox, and how many of them do you actually go back and reference? Right. So if they think of this as a service by keeping you tidy and allowing you to have a self-cleaning inbox, you know, the cat box that you never have to empty. Then and you are allowed to you know opt in to emails um, that you want to save intentionally. Most of it is a lot of garbage that's temporary absolutely. anyway. Right, so I don't think it's intentionally you know it may, maybe it does have some of those right. other ideas about. Immediately I went to Snapchat and like oh my gosh now you know what what does it mean and it's like going into that you know right. and and also. It is kind of like playing with those things of the illusions that it, you know that you, we can kind of get caught up in in the virtual world, you know, and, and delusions that we have too, you know. So it is something to be Sorry, aware of. Oh no, that's that's good. Yeah, what is it? Yes. <laughs> this is what it says in two sentences. It includes. It's called confidential notifications. It includes the ability to password protect emails unsend messages and prevent others from forwarding, printing, copying, or downloading messages. Disappearing messages come through the ability to set expiration dates for emails, which means they will disappear from inboxes after a specified amount of time. From the other person? From the other Yeah, you just take a screenshot. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, that takes yeah. a lot of my effort. That is a mm -hmm. Yeah. But anybody can, but you, it yeah. never disappears. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was more like your cat box. <laughs> Well, it is kind of the illusion of that. Too. Yeah, it is. I don't know. Uh -huh. Interesting. Free your mind. Yeah. <laughs> At least you think you are. Um, so going back to um, our young lady today, who, uh, Allie's story, and she's going to tell us um, what she considers to be the concept of sex thing. And, and how it happened to her. And then in the second part of this little video, it's a very short one, um, we're going to look at um, other ways that this whole thing could have gone, of the situation that she's involved in. Even 
though nearly everyone has heard of sexting, a lot of you aren't really sure what it is. Sexting isn't flirty talk, or even dirty talk. Sexting is sending sexually explicit photos from your cell phone or computer. So, when Ali's ex-boyfriend asked her to send him a naked photo, he was asking her to sext him. After the breakup, I was feeling rejected and extremely vulnerable. Having him ask me for the picture it made me feel wanted again, even though it was completely out of character for me. I just said it. The picture getting out never crossed my mind. Once Alex sent the photo to her ex-boyfriend, the ball was in his court. He could forward, delete, or keep the photo to himself. But one in five sex recipients say they forwarded the images on to someone else. The next day was a cheerleading competition at the high school. We were in the stands, and a kid was sitting behind us, and he pulled out his cell phone, and he was like, isn't this you in this picture? And that's when we realized he ended up sending it to everybody in this contact list. Okay, so I think we passed out a form to a page to each of you. Um, and there's some other things to consider. Well, first of all, what does that make you? Is that what you thought it would be? Yeah, nothing different. Okay, so, um, so let's take it a little bit further. Um, let's go to the first one. Uh, Gina, Jenna is a fourth grader, and she adores her younger brother, Matt, age three. And she took a video of Matt naked in the bathtub and emailed it to all of her friends with the note, how cute is my baby brother? Her friend's mom saw the video and was mortified to find it on her daughter's school-based email account. She called the school media. So, what do you think is going on with that? And what do you think of her reactions, the mother's reaction? So over the top. Yeah, like it's like pretty innocent. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So where's the lines then? You know, the boundaries as far as what is accept accessible, acceptable. Like she could call the girl's mom and be like, hey, you know, did you see this? Like you might not want your little baby's naked picture out there, but yeah. you know, or something like that, yeah. instead of like going ballistic with the school like that. It's just kind of and, mm -hmm. Is it still something that, you know, like it used to be, um, that if you had a, paper, a picture of a naked baby, it was considered cute? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it still? Yeah. Do yeah. kids consider it that? Uh, My kids were totally, I mean, from a young age when, and I didn't really take naked pictures, but in the bathtub together they were playing. Uh -huh. Couldn't really see anything out of the picture, and they're like, you got to delete this at the age of five, you know? <laughs> don't show this to anybody, don't put it in the photo book. You know, they scratched it out. So, I don't know, that was a natural response, but, you know, uh -huh. at a very young age, uh -huh. where it was just a natural, where we hadn't talked about anything because they were so young. Right, 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 too young to... Well, but that was their response. What do you think, Sue? I mean, technically, um, Naked pictures of kids under the age of 18 is child pornography, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Who is prosecuting somebody who is, has a you know bathtub photo of a kid? I don't think anybody. I mean, realistically, I don't think that's happening. I mean, you would have to be a monster if you were the cop who prosecutes the sister or the the mother who you know who shares this photo. If you are in possession of a, if you take, if you distribute or are in possession of photos of people who are under the age of 18 and they are naked, then you technically, yeah, you're doing something illegal. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when it comes to this kind of, you know, sexting stuff, I don't know how much kids listen to this illegal um, mm -hmm. threat because they don't know anybody who's been prosecuted. Like, it's not something that happens. They might know a lot of kids who send naked pictures, and they might have seen naked pictures, even. 
But how many kids have, I mean, there are cases, don't get me wrong, there are cases out there, surely. Um, I just did a panel the other night with a lawyer who, you know, who works on these all the time. But it's just not all that common, and kids don't feel the threat of it. There's one, one thing that I just did last week for some, whatever reason we talked about sex offenders, or, you know, mm -hmm. or, and I said, you know, well, they are listed, and there's a website, and yeah. neither one of my children knew it, so I clicked us in and it's our address. I said, well, let's see how many are in South Pasadena living around us, and it shows the house and the name, yeah. and you click on it, and it shows a picture. Most of them were at an age of 40 and above, but one stood out, he was 21. Wow. Uh, we clicked on him in San Marino, really nearby, like four blocks away, and it was child pornography. Yeah. So it said, was in the possession of pictures of children under the age of 18. Right. So I shared that with them and they're like, oh my god, he's 21, because they're following all these 21 YouTubers. Yeah. And, wow. and I think it hit home for them, just seeing that. So open that website with your children. Yeah, that's really interesting. Right. In South Pasadena, I Google the yeah. sex of yeah. And that hit home because he was, you stood out. I'm like, why well, that? It's that easy. And there's no distinction. And, you are, and this is for life. Between are. whether this is like I had a picture of my 18 year old girlfriend or whether this was like really horrendous. Right. Right. So for them, right. I think something clicked when they saw that guy that really lives a few blocks away. Wow. And now he's got to be registered sex offender for this. Right. right. Yeah. It seems so unfair. Like, right. if it really was like. But we don't know. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Just, he might be a horrendous, awful person who yeah. was yeah. producing, you know, yeah. terrible child yeah. pornography. Well, this is like, know. it seems innocent because it's a fourth grader who's sending it, but if right. this suddenly is an adult sending it, then you don't know. Like, it could be yeah. somebody else's but people, right. you know? So there's all these services where they hashtag, hash all these yeah. pornographic images, and you can, they, they check against those because some people, like if somebody just sends it out and says, oh, look at this cute baby, a, a, a picture of a baby, it could not be, it might not even be your baby. I mean, that is the reality of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, I mean, the other gray area, I remember, you know, just like innocence, like, you know, you have a bunch of kids are all running through the sprinkler when we were little and stuff. Yes. So it could be other people's children who you don't really think of, but maybe they're in their diaper or they're toddlers, yes. whatever. Yes. It seems, it's, it is very innocent, but if you actually think about it in that light, if you had a sent it out and it was like a bunch of friends photos, right? Like maybe, it's very innocent, but I mean, uh -huh. I don't know. It's not right. Right? right? I mean, it seems so, yeah. like we all have those yeah. <laughs> pictures, you're running around swimming, oh, and yeah. everybody's running around. Yeah, my friends in here. Yeah. Oh, my mother grew up uh, down yeah. in the valley, yeah. down off of San, Di yeah. San Diego, you know, in the red basket down there. And she's got a picture of her and her sister fishing. Yeah. They're in their underwear, yeah. just yeah. their underpants with yeah. their braids and yeah. you know their fishing poles, you yeah. know. And it's on one hand, you know, cute and so shiny, innocent, but, but yeah. On the other hand, and I guess maybe one of the things that it keeps coming up is being so cognizant of what we put online, um, and maybe being online necessarily isn't the place for some of those images. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. that pornography when? It's two three year olds with their underwear on, and that's I it. Can't I mean, imagine. what? Who's going to prosecute that? Well, right. I mean, we were in preschool, we had a whole debate about whether the girls should run around without their tops on or not because we uh -huh. had a mud pit and all the boys were uh -huh. running around without their tops sure. on. And yeah. right. most of us were okay with it. Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. So we couldn't do it anymore, and everybody's like, uh -huh. like one parent didn't like yeah. it. Yeah. Well, the other thing I heard the other day that I thought was interesting was when, right. when okay. there are. Uh, naked pictures of girls, um, they tend to have their faces in them, but mm -hmm. pictures of boys tend to not have their faces mm -hmm. in them, and so girls are more identifiable than boys in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh my gosh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other thing about this case study or this little yeah. anecdote or whatever it is, is that it was a school based email account. Mm -hmm. That's which true. Is a problem, <laughs> yes. I would think. Um, it doesn't, you know, really say any more about that. Not that it's any worse than it's not a school based or a or a non school based, but I think that that would raise it to mm -hmm. the level of yeah. mm -hmm. of contacting the school because then right. it involves a bigger entity mm -hmm. if they're using the school based journal account. Yeah. I think that does make it worse actually. 
Because yeah. it's a kind of an inappropriate use of the school right. system. Right. Right. It's like, what do you send on your work email versus exactly. Your email? Right. Yeah. And so then, on one hand, that's like priming the kids getting ready for going into the work, the adult yeah. world. Right. You know, how do you practice being an adult? And if you're not making good choices there, you're not going to make good choices when you get out. So, good point. The fourth grader shouldn't have an email. Yeah. Well, I yeah, know that's right. <laughs> I was starting to. Okay. There's a lot of, um, I mean, obviously, you know, they can't get Gmail accounts and they can't use any kind of social media before the age of 13, but uh, it, with the Google apps for education, yeah. they do make exceptions for kids under, yeah. mm -hmm. under the age of 13. But can mm -hmm. they email their friends from that? Mm -hmm. They can? Well, well on, on the other, kids, on the other Gmail accounts. So, like, all of your students have Gmail accounts yeah, they internally. Do. Like, it's yeah. not something that you can use to, like, sign up for. Something right? It's right. I think it's usually just that. That's what I mean. Yeah, because it's an ED, like an EDU or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, my kids got Gmail accounts once they were eleven or something, mm -hmm. and I just faked it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I faked it so I could but... hold my son's name. Right? right. I just faked it the other day because uh, his full name was available. But did you give it to him? Or did uh, he, it? I have it right yeah. now. So my my husband did that when they were born, but then he just we just have them. Right. That's funny. So, so that's an interesting question, though. Should your email be your full name? Mm. Because I didn't let my kids have their full name as their email, so when they got spam, it wasn't so obvious. So I made them have like a nickname that they're not normally called. I think you can do both. Yeah. I think you can. I wanted to hold his. I don't know how long Google's yeah. going to be around. Right. You know? I really don't know. Yeah. But I love having my simple, you know, sue thoughts at gmail.com. Like, I, I love being able to just tell somebody and they could be my name for, you know, for ease. And, you know, oh, it is. Yeah, it's great. So. As opposed to his like his Minecraft account, which is huge. So while we're on the subject of talking about you know the legalities around all of this, another link that I included that's included in the uh, email that I sent you is on U.S. laws on sexting, um, and it gives you state by state um, information. And Sue was sharing with me just earlier that when she did that panel with, um, with a lawyer, his perspective on how, um, how we engage, and, you know, the legal ramifications of how we engage or the use of uh, Im images was quite different than most because he saw it as being, he sees the worst. So, you are you talking about the way he talks to kids about? Yeah. yeah. He does this whole talk for kids about, and he's coming out with a book, you know, about all the things that you don't know and that you should be taught. And he does a full thing about sexting and, and how you can be thrown in jail and registered sex offender for the rest of your life. And, like, he really hits them hard with the, the scary, and the fact that it's a family thing. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I said the research that I've read um, kind of downplays that a lot and says that's not necessarily the best tactic for getting kids to not, you know, not sexed, I guess. Um, so his, his way or the down way, what's not the best way? The, it, hitting the legal aspect, like telling kids, don't do this because it's illegal and you are... It doesn't do much. I mean, that's kind of what I've read, is okay. that it's not as effective. Like, I certainly, my kids know it's illegal because they've heard me talk about it, but I ask them, you know, I'm like, I'm going into this debate with a lawyer tonight, and, you know, I, I want to win, right, so, so, so how do I, you know, what would, and, I, and I showed them the research that I have um, from this woman, her name is Elizabeth Englander, and she's out of the Massachusetts Aggression Reduction Center in Bridgewater, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and she's done extensive mm -hmm. work on the digital lives of kids and all the risk around it, around cyberbullying and sexting and other risky behaviors. And she has recommendations on how to talk about sexting, and you know she she says you know don't have judgment on it is her thing. Like don't act like it's the scariest thing in the whole entire world. You know she approaches it kind of the same way that I approach maybe sex education in the same way. And maybe it's not the way that everybody else would do it, but I don't want to say to my kids, you know. Don't ever have sex. This is the worst thing in the world. You're going to get pregnant. You're going to get AIDS, and you're going to die. Right? That's kind of the, that's the way that the illegality thing kind of strikes me. Is like you're going to get thrown in jail. You're going to have a felony. You're going to be sex offender for the rest of your life. Right? Like I'm not saying that everybody should go out and sex. Find some balance. There is some balance there. So approach it in a way that is more 
open, I think, and, and open the conversation. Well, wait till you're 18 to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, delay, yeah. delay, delay, yeah. delay as much as possible for all these things. What was the woman's name again? Elizabeth Englander. She's my hero. <laughs> She's great. <laughs> I mean, the thing I say to my kids is I say the legality thing, but I also say, um, you know, do you really want someone to have your picture? If it's like, you know, what happens when you break up? I just kind of say, emotionally, what happens when you break up and they've got your picture and now they can send it to you? Well, there like, are way worse consequences to them. Right? That's way worse. That's embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to not be embarrassed at age 13 is really, I think, what gets them, right? But at age 12, you believe Sean Mendes, who will be, you know, the singer, who will be with you forever. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of yes. course. And that's your dream. And you think this person for, sh you know what I mean? Okay. Well, let's, let's listen to some kids. <laughs> right. Forever. <laughs> Starts. Jake says, so what are you wearing? 
Shayla says, what do you like to know? Hmm. Will Flirty talk back and forth again? Like I said in the video, this is not sexting. Jake, hopefully nothing. Why don't you show me? And Shayla says, um... So he is very specifically asking her to send him a naked picture. What I want you to do is to come up with what Shayla should or would say back to him. Is there a way to to handle this so that Jake and Shayla are still talking, or do you care? If somebody asked you a question like that, would you drop them in a hot minute? Well, like, it's crazy. Like, some people do that, and then they just basically just ruin their lives. It'll make me think more, like, what I'm sending before I press send. I know people who have done it, and just, for the most part, they don't know the full extent of the consequences, but also because they are asked to, and they just say yes. If you're done writing, hold up your iPad so I can see it. We have. We have only been dating a month, so I'll wait. I don't think I should, but I still want to talk to you. Good. If you loved me, you wouldn't make me. If you cared, you wouldn't want that. Okay? I have to go to bed. Sorry, good night. That is frowned upon by the law. No thanks, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, but not sorry. Oh, you're not like your mom? I don't know if I want to know what that means. No, it doesn't. Oh, gotcha. Like, this is her mother. <laughs> okay, you would pretend they were your mom and be like, oh, I don't think so. Let's talk about my daughter. They were really trying to think of, well, how would I say that? What, what would be something that would be a benefit or a drawback? They were very willing to share and talk about what we were discussing today with a great amount of maturity. So, you have no control. Once that picture is sent from you to somebody else, the power is now in their hands. Once it's sent from you, it's out of your hands. Do you think that that would work on a one-on-one -on -one basis? No. Too that on a one-on-one -on -one basis that you'd be there would be too much intimacy to really be able to talk. You know, with your own kid. Yeah. When there's yeah. been that safety. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel like their answers were, if you're in that moment. Those, I'm sorry, those answers to me were mm. like, yeah, yeah, one of them was like, why don't we, maybe we should break up if you want this for me. Right. I don't think anybody has that much confidence mm -hmm. in high school to do that. And to say that kind of thing. So and say goodnight. Or, yeah. you know, you kind of flirt back and try and get out of it is what I'm, I'm guessing. And I think that's a very reasonable, I'm sitting in a classroom, I'm not feeling any emotion response. Mm -hmm. Or what, does it, what would be the right, what the teacher would think is the right response. Yeah, yeah, it didn't feel real to me. Because I know I wouldn't respond it that mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what would get a better, what would be, not a better response, but what's one way of maybe getting a response? I would just be like, hey, nice try, you know. Mm -hmm. How about we just describe? How about you describe it to me? Or, I don't know. You'd, you'd want to keep the flirtation up because uh -huh. that's the fun part. Right. Oh wow. That's yeah. You know, that's the fun part uh -huh. is the flirting back and forth. I think. Uh huh. Uh, that's what I miss about being there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Yeah, no, yeah. Right. Maybe the important thing wasn't what they said back, but more just hearing about what the consequence, like just having a minute to think about what looked kind of innocent-ish, mm -hmm. and then how it suddenly turned, and then right. how it could have some consequences. Yeah. Just making them think about it at that time. Yeah, There's just so good. many, so many layers to this, and all of this, and it's just, you know, all of those are good and important, because, yeah, because, and each child is going to, a young person is going to be different, and all, you know, the adult is talking to them as well, so, yeah. I remember noticing there's only, there are only 12 kids in there. And I'm thinking, when does an adult at a school ever have just 12 kids in front of them? And I know, like, if another if a teacher is actually doing that in a little situation, 
teachers, she would be a lot more, I would I guess, she I mean, has a special teacher, right. who has a lot of uh -huh. rapport, that they would be a lot of like goofing off and like mm -hmm. in the back, there'd be a lot of. So I think like my my best practice for delivering a le lesson like this is one in situation. Do you guys have advisory in your middle schools or in your high schools? Like school counselors? Mm -hmm. So an advisory period or like, it, it's like a homeroom period. A lot of folks have one where you have the same teacher, you have the same cohort of kids, and you are working through a lot of life issues. We have it's a homeroom, they're not allowed to do anything in it. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. the they're like by <laughs> their contracts are not allowed to do anything. Okay, so, um, so a lot of schools that I work with have an advisory period where they do have yeah. close relationships between a teacher and the students and they're, mm -hmm. you know, they talk about life situations yeah. like this and so that's, I think, best case scenario wow. yeah. is when you already have a good and well-established relationship with your students and you can discuss you things like this. Teacher, yeah. And so that's one situation. The other situation that I see this worked in a lot is, is health class and sex ed class, right? Where you're already talking about navigating, you know, different kinds of behaviors and different issues. You know, you can talk about health ed and you can talk about sex ed and knowledge is one thing, but actually putting that into action and behavior and always outside of class is usually, you know, where, where these, it's the same thing. All of these the kind of moral and ethical decisions that kids are struggling with when it comes to being online, these are going to be implemented, you know, they can have all the knowledge in the world, but if they don't feel, if they've never thought about this, you know, or if they don't feel like they have, you know, the self-efficacy to be able to make it happen, or they don't understand the consequences mm -hmm. of not making it happen, or, you know, they don't, they haven't thought fully through the whole entire thing, then, you know, the first time that they think about this is when somebody asks them, that's not the situation we want. Yeah. We want them, to, even if it's hokey answers, yeah. even if it's goofy yeah. answers that you're delivering to your teacher just to get it off your back and to look good for the day. Like practicing and just thinking about it yeah. with a cohort yeah. and, and in a culture in your classroom where you're all kind of saying like, you're hoping to prevent that question in the first place, yeah. right? To all those kids in that room. And like, okay, all these girls are inoculated in here. I better not try this stupid question, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, right. that's the whole idea, is uh -huh. that you're trying to build this culture. Yeah. Um, I, like, I agree with you. And I also feel like it's not just the moment of, of sending a picture. You have to teach your kids since, like, their core value of themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, if they don't, like I see some kids wear very provocatively, even at our school, and if it's your family, if you allow that, then it's easier for them to, you know what I mean? Like I, I don't know how to put it in words. Like, mm -hmm. like your kid would grow in an environment that they will not even entertain because they have self respect and they're not putting themselves out there in that situation. And it's more than just that moment. In time, that what they should do. I think it's more than that. Is is what you teach them as a family, mm -hmm. and 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 you do talk about sex mm -hmm. in a positive way, and and just it's not just like when they're thirteen, all of a sudden you need to talk about it. Mm -hmm. I think it has all to be an ongoing, way. ongoing since since they're young, mm -hmm. and make it a positive. Sex is not a bad thing. It's just not the right timing right now. You know, the T is not a right timing. That's timing for everything. That's an important point is the self respect. Because if yeah. something makes you feel yeah. mm -hmm. not right, then you should have enough confidence or to say no. To be able to say no, whatever that is. Yeah. If it's yeah. a photo yeah. Yeah. or yeah. anything else. Right. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that Elizabeth Englander points out is it's not the sex that um, it's not the sense, sense uh, photos between, you know, teenagers that are such a problem. It's the coerced mm -hmm. sexes that are the hugest problem yeah. and that have the worst ramifications. And most of the time, it's an older boy asking a younger girl yeah. for a naked picture, mm -hmm. and that is where she sees all the bad things happening. Laura, mm -hmm. well, a story about some guy saying, "Send me a picture of yourself or I'm gonna kill myself." Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And then you're like. Yeah. What do you do? Uh -huh. Right? What do you tell your kids to do? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you do? You call people right then. Like, you're like on the phone with every single person. You call your parents, you call his right. parents, you call the police, you call everybody. Everybody. You hope so, but of course they're probably also saying, but don't tell anybody. But don't tell I will also. Mm -hmm. You know, like, so. 
it's scary for them. And you have to, mm -hmm. That's another some, of the, some of the problem is the anonymity of these two, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So you don't, you think you know if you met them, I don't know where, or some other, you know, and then, so some, sometimes that's the, you know, it's the social media platforms, whatever, when people make up their persona and you think you know who you're talking to, it, it's my boyfriend far away or something, and you know, so, and it very much could be somebody who's creating these for pornography purposes or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's one thing like in your school, um, yes, you have a kitchen or set it around. There's actually people who prey on people for, mm -hmm. you know, it's extortion. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's try another one. Um, Michaela is a ninth grader and was tagged in another girl's challenge video. In it, Michaela's classmate had filmed herself as she poured freezing cold water over her head. In the video, the girl's wearing a white t-shirt. According to the unwritten rules of the challenge, Michaela had been tapped to do the same thing next. Mm -hmm. So she does it. No. There's one consequence. If she doesn't do it, there's also a consequence. Mm -hmm. So how are they going to? How's she gonna negotiate that challenge? Wear a bra. <laughs> <laughs> On the outside. Yeah. Blue. Wear a swimsuit. Well, dark 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 all of this says determine whether you think it constitutes sexting. And you know, does that constitute sexting? I mean, that was like the challenge, the bucket challenge, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, I don't think it was sexting either, but then it's like implying that, you know, it's a wet t-shirt contest yes. with, uh -huh. you know, <laughs> and that would be sexting, so, yeah. I mean, let's mm -hmm. get Keith. You, know, let me talk about the you want to talk There's about Keith? Sure. Well, no, no, no. I'm just, I just, I'm just <laughs> reading it. I just, I was feeling like as we're talking about this, it's like there's so much talk about naked girls. And okay. It's like, mm -hmm. Why? It's like there doesn't seem like the consequences are for the boys asking for this. I mean, mm -hmm. if they, I guess if they are in possession of it, then it's illegal and all that stuff. But it's like, wait a minute. Let's, you know, not like all this slut shaming when it's like mm -hmm. boys are you sending know, a lot of pictures. Boys are? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah. I mean, not, I, I haven't heard that yet, but. You haven't received any yet? No. <laughs> 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 I have two dollars. <laughs> what were you yeah. saying? Boys are sending a lot of pictures? Yeah. Yeah. This, um, of themselves? This lawyer, yes. This lawyer was uh, talking about how, you know, he ends up having a lot of conversations with boys. And he's like, pardon my French. No more dick pics, kids. Like he's he's straight up like will you know you gotta stop this. This is unacceptable. This is not this is not behavior. It's not wanted. It is sexual harassment. Mm. Like you are sexually harassing mm. someone that you are sending pictures to, and it is completely unacceptable. It's not funny. It's not a joke. Like this is not okay. Cause they're immature. They thought that's arousing. Yes. I know. Really? Yeah. Like that seems like right? Like like yeah. <laughs> Who has ever in their entire life met somebody and they're like, whoa, <laughs> that's <laughs> for me. They don't get what. Right? Well, we're built for me. Yeah, that's not the <laughs> Right? And mm -hmm. if you are not teaching what is consent, mm -hmm. by sending someone a naked picture of yourself without, I mean, we're talking about like, you know, coercion and consent are two of the things that I think you can have conversations about very, very young. You do not have to talk about sexual imagery, you do not have to talk about sex, but you can talk a lot about consent and what you're, what you're allowed to do with your body. You know, and that's your body, and nobody can take that away from you, and nobody can do anything to your body without your permission, and you can't do anything to anybody else without their permission. <laughs> that is consent, right? You can't expose yourself electronically or in real life. 
Okay? So these are two things that you could start having conversations about in kindergarten. Right? Have you seen the British take that consent video? That's my thing. Do you guys know? It's have you seen it? Have you seen it? It's all talking about consent in terms of a cup of tea. And it's, it's very British. But it's like, if your friend came over and you asked if they wanted a cup of tea, and you made them a cup of tea, and then they didn't want to drink it, would you force them to drink it? <laughs> if your friend passes <laughs> out? If your friend passes out, would you still force them to drink it? <laughs> and it's this awesome video. <laughs> Apparently, there's a couple of really racy, horrible versions of it out there, so make sure you get the clean one. But um, it's so funny. And I watched it with my kids a couple And it's times. perfect. It's, it doesn't talk about sex. It talks about the cup of tea. And they're like, that's ridiculous. And I'm like, right. So just let's think about that in terms of everything. Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's so funny. It's good. I'm glad you're boy months. <laughs> <laughs> well, but if it makes you feel better, I mean, Fenton, he's, he feels like he's a ninth grader and he's now at Loxa, so I can't speak for the high school here, but he feels like consent is being really getting yes. hard. Mm -hmm. They'll watch mm -hmm. movies with me and say, that girl didn't say that it was okay to kiss her. And I, and I kind of feel like they're almost ruining romance in oh. movies because... Mm -hmm. Like, well, sometimes you just know, and they're like, but he didn't ask, and I'm like, oh, God, you're right. so timid now. <laughs> like, right. all the boys are going to be scared. <laughs> right, they're never going to do anything, because they're going to be like, uh, is it okay if I kiss you now? I, okay. I don't know if you've seen any of the, do you guys remember Antioch College and the SNL skits that came out? Uh, this was like, what, 25 years ago or something, when they actively, requ you know, require consent you know, between uh, between the students before any sexual acts. And um, a friend of mine was, that was her cohort of college kids in, at Antioch, and it was mocked on SNL, and they were the laughing stock of, of the country. It was recently on NPR. And now, so they just did a piece on NPR revisiting mm -hmm. that oh, whole funny. set, that whole piece of consent in today's society, mm -hmm. and looking at it in light of Me Too, and mm -hmm. saying like, no, this was totally, Ahead of its time, the world was just not ready for this. And yeah, right. really interesting. Right. I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was just last week or two weeks ago. Not long ago. My friend is in the video. Oh, <laughs> okay. well, I, I heard it on NPR, so I, yeah. I didn't watch it. So, uh, included in your, um, in your um, email was a teen version, um, a teen. Guy, on did I show you that one? Uh, we, it's up there. Let's see. Sexting nude photographs. I think that that one might be it. Yep. One so I can click on it. You're giving it a right click. I don't know why it's. See if you can give it a left click. Oh no, uh, that's, no not that's not it. That's not it. Sorry. Oh, works now. It's not no. it's sexting it's handbook. handbook. It's the sexting <laughs> handbook. I know it sounds like it's telling you how to sex. Right. It's not. Okay. So. This is you, some more information just to share. This is more from their point of view, um, but it might uh, be again a, a good place to you know start a conversation. A lot of what we do at Common Sense is preventive and proactive before things happen, and this is the one resource that we have that is used in the case of you know something happens. Here is a list of things that you can read about you know to do. Um, like how you can take action for your kid or for somebody who you know has been on the receiving end or has experienced this in some way. So is this specifically for sexting or is it for um, very, very sexting? Very sexting. Um, yeah, really it goes through that Amanda Todd story, it has that in yeah. there as well. And um, decision making and control, fears, impact. Um, yeah, there's Amanda. Yeah, uh, Gloria, did you send this link out? You sent this link out. Oh, okay. You, went, yes. you know, I had two bounce back. So no, I got that. Oh, you got it? Okay. Yeah. So it's in there. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it's probably called the sexting handbook. Handbook, yeah. yes. I did. Oh, okay. I thought I didn't. And then the other links inside of it as well. Like it really goes through a lot of cases like sextortion and revenge porn and you know it's very, if you want information about sexting it is in this handbook including you know things that you can do afterwards um, and lots of research lots of factual information 
I mean, there is some preventive, proactive stuff in here and tips to prevent it with your kids as well, but a lot of, a lot of stuff in here. A lot of stuff. Okay. Now, one other thing. Um, in this, this email, there was, um, under the Common Sense Census, media used by teens and tweens, um, we were talking about some of this last, the, over the last few weeks. And there's some fact sheets that you can download, and I passed one out. And that one was um, multitasking, going in a totally different direction than we've been going for this whole, uh, this whole session. But just to point out that there's so many other different fact sheets inside of this. Um, and that is on your uh, media use by teens and tweens. If you go to that website where all those research pages are, then there's some fact sheets in there as well. Uh, television and beauty, video and habits, and also teens and smartphones. And reading in the digital age as well. So, are there some questions that we have? Of course there are that we, burning questions that we need to get to. Now we do have some information on the following pages, 16 and new photographs. discussion about. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Yeah, what is it that you're not seeing included in this, these pages that you would like to have an answer for or to at least have some discussion about? Mm -hmm. So it does explain your kids your kids the sex thing is not a normal or common behavior, but it sounds like it is, right? I think it depends on the population. I think there are some populations of kids where sex thing is pretty rampant. Yeah. And um, what age group? High, high, high school. But the, I mean, the research indicates you need to talk in middle school, like have conversations in middle school mm -hmm. um, about sex thing because you cannot wait until high school. Does anybody know if this kind of topic is covered in the middle school, like sex ed and stuff? No. I don't think so. I'll text it. This is the only right. place here that I think that they, I mean, I know they're talking about at home, but no. I'm wondering if they have anything at school here. Yeah. But it really, it, it's very much a, I don't know, a sex ed type topic. Yeah, that's you know? what I mean. Like health ed, sex ed type topic. I've heard ours here is, I mean, my daughter's only six, but I've heard it's pretty, like, it's more, <laughs> You mean much more than the one we remember. Yeah, it's really it's good. Pretty it's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. The it's a state right. mandate that it has to be comprehensive. Well, yes. a few years back, it happened here in middle school, but I was learning that someone's sending to make a picture of themselves. Sure, I'm sure it's out. And then we <laughs> got forwarded, and then we got a little bit out of hand here in school. this middle school. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. I think it's probably easier to get a middle schooler to send and and and. and to send a picture than a high schooler. Yeah. Well, I think what is also fairly common is when the students start dating each mm -hmm. other, they're not really dating, but, um, and then when they break up, mm -hmm. then it, it becomes a problem mm -hmm. where boys and girls are saying bad things about each other mm -hmm. on social media quite frequently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, that's they've got a tool that right really helps to spread things. Get it all out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, something I personally didn't see until like eighth grade when they really start kind of more of that dating and 
Mm-hmm. Whatever that is. Coupling up. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever term. Yeah. Yeah.